Welcome again. In this session, we are reading Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. Stephen gets arrested. Now, we just came from the previous portion of Scripture where we talked about how Stephen was one of those who was chosen to serve tables, which is really a ministry to the needy, to the widows in particular in this, in this particular context. So Stephen was a man full of grace and power and the Holy Spirit, okay? So you can be full of the Holy Spirit, full of grace, full of power, a wonderful man of God, and still not really preach the Word of God, but rather do ministry to the needy, to the poor. So this is where we pick up this portion of Scripture. This is Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Stephen, full of faith and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. You see, there are some people who want to be, you know, these great men of God that perform great wonders and great signs among the people and full of faith and power and all this stuff. You can do that without even preaching. You can do that without it actually even being an evangelist or a so-called prophet or a pastor or a bishop or a priest. You can do that just in your own place in the body of Messiah, even if it's just serving tables, serving people, helping the needy. But some of those who were of the synagogue called the Libertines and of the Cyrenians, of the Alexandrians, and of those of Cilicia and Asia arose, disputing with Stephen. They weren't able to withstand the spirit and wisdom by which he spoke. And it's my prayer that every one of you would have the spirit and wisdom of Stephen so that those who oppose you, those who question you, and those who challenge you will not be able to withstand the spirit and wisdom by which you speak. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. See, this is the conspiracy here. This was the lie. They secretly. Why did they do it secretly? Because it was a lie. They secretly induced men to say, Oh, yeah, let's say that Stephen over here will just say that he, you know, speaks blasphemous words against Moses, being the Torah, the law of God, and God. Okay? You know this is false. Stephen never, ever did speak anything against the Torah of God. As a true Christian, as a true follower of Yeshua, it was his duty to obey and to honor the Torah, not to speak blasphemous words against it. Obviously, he didn't. This is why they secretly conspired to bring this false accusation against him, just like how they secretly conspired to bring false accusations against Jesus himself. Remember, Jesus said, if they did it to me, they'll do it to you. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and came against him and seized him. So that's arresting him. They arrested Stephen. Then brought him into the council, to the Sanhedrin, and set up false witnesses who said, this man never stops speaking blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. You see, this is false, okay? Meaning that Stephen did the opposite. He spoke for the holy place. He spoke for the Torah. He was a man who was for, pro-Torah, not anti-Torah. Like a lot of Christians are today. I mean, it's just embarrassing, okay? A lot of Christians are today, they are anti-Torah. They are antinomians, they are against the law of God because they claim that we go by grace now. Grace is the power to repent so that you can obey God's commands. That's what grace does. If grace does not give you the power to repent and get free from sin and to obey God, then that grace is useless. For we have heard him say that this Yeshua of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Notice, this is a false witness. Jesus never did say anything about changing Moses' customs or anything like that. Changing the Torah, changing anything, okay? The New Testament is not naos new, it's kainos new, okay? 
Check out my other teachings on this. This is very, very important. You understand the difference between New Testament and Old Testament. It's not a brand new Testament. It is a refreshed Testament. Just like how Jesus said, I bring a new commandment to you to love one another. Well, anybody who knows anything about the scriptures, anybody who knows anything about the Old Testament, so to speak, knows that the command to love is in the Old Testament. You know, that's where it all comes from. So Jesus, when he said, I bring you a new commandment to love one another, it was a kainos commandment, not a naos commandment, just like the kainos testament. Again, I don't want to get into this very deep, but check out my blog and also check out my other videos on this subject because a lot of Christians, by far the majority of pastors, preachers, evangelists, and Christians and pew warmers get this wrong. So the false accusation was that Jesus would change the customs which Moses delivered to us. False. All who sat in the council, fastening their eyes on him, on Stephen, saw his face like it was the face of an angel. Don't miss the next teaching. We are going to read and we are going to dive in to Stephen's last sermon to his accusers. It is awesome. Remember, this man, Stephen, is a man of great faith and power, a man who did wonderful signs and wonders among the people, a man filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't miss the next teaching. It is going to be glorious. Seek God while he may be found. And I guarantee you, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him, call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. I love you guys.